Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Foreign Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, revealed that the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies has changed the process of preparing diplomats. He added that the members of academic missions will undergo training courses with a minimum of 70 training hours. He indicated that there is a daily coordination between missions and ministries to provide them with all the information they request, stressing that all the plans and reports that the government is working on are reflected in the indicators. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa stressed the need to work to enhance cooperation with ministries and their projects so that they are reflected on international indicators. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the National Human Rights Plan is unprecedented at the level of countries in the region. He emphasized that all reports issued from abroad on the Kingdom of Bahrain are taken into account, studied and responded in a transparent manner. The Bahrain Institute for Political Development announced the opening of registration for students wishing to study abroad to participate in the Ambassadors of the Nation program, which will start on August 14th. The program will be presented in this version for the first time in both Arabic and English. It comes in line with the national plan to enhance national belonging and consolidate the values of citizenship, our Bahrain. The Bahrain Institute for Political Development affirmed its endeavor to continue its national mission in educating and establishing the various segments of Bahraini society, especially the youth category who wish to study abroad by providing them with the necessary skills to represent their country well and to reflect the best image of Bahraini society. The community police offers security and community services to contribute to the success of the Ashura commemoration and promote general safety. The services cover mourners and visitors to the mourning areas. The police personnel are also involved in awareness campaigns. The general director of traffic had announced the intensification of traffic presence in all the streets surrounding the funerals in which the Ashura commemoration is held through traffic arrangements that contribute to the smooth flow of movement and the safety of participants and all road users. Based on the directives of the cabinet, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to provide the safe atmosphere and the facilitation of all the needs and requirements in a manner that contributes to the success of the Ashura season, and with the follow up and directives of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in order to facilitate matters related to this occasion. The Director of Inspection and Occupational Safety at the Ministry of Labor, Mustafa al-Sheikh, said that the implementation of Resolution No. 3 of 2013 regarding the ban on work at noon and in open places for more than 15 years expresses the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain to protect workers and maintain their safety, which is a consistent approach adopted by the government within the system of human values that has made the kingdom among the ranks of developed countries in preserving the rights of workers and ensuring their safety in the work environment. He said that the ministry had developed an integrated plan to cover the work sites in various governorates of the kingdom, noting that the aforementioned decision is applied to all economic sectors except for the oil and gas, in addition to excluding emergency maintenance work that cannot be postponed provided that the employer is committed to taking all the necessary preventative measures to protect the workers from the sun damage. The Director of Inspection and Occupational Safety indicated that the rate of injuries from heat stress, heat stroke and other summer diseases has witnessed a remarkable decrease since the implementation of the decision, which contributed to the preservation of human resources. Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund has set up a company to invest in promising Egyptian sectors extending a policy of pumping money into the Egyptian economy. The $620 billion sovereign wealth fund said on Friday that the sectors in Egypt it would target through its new Saudi Egyptian investment company included infrastructure, real estate, healthcare, financial services, food and agriculture, manufacturing and pharmaceuticals. Saudi Arabia said in June it intended to lead $30 billion worth of investments in Egypt following a visit to Cairo by Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman. 
Egypt has been carrying out intensive communications to control the escalation in Gaza Strip and calm the situation there. Egyptian security sources confirmed that the mediation to calm the situation in Gaza Strip will continue until reaching a ceasefire. Cairo called on all the parties to exercise self-restraint in order to control the situation in Gaza Strip and to prevent it from developing. Britain, France and Germany urged Iran not to make unrealistic demands in the talks to salvage a 2015 deal aimed at reining in Tehran's nuclear ambitions. Officials from world leaders and Iran were meeting in the Austrian capital for the first time since March. The three countries known as the E3 group said the talks did not mark a new round of negotiations but were merely technical discussions. Britain, China, France, Germany, Iran, Russia and the United States signed the GCPOA in July 2015. But following the unilateral withdrawal of the United States in 2018 and the reimposition of U.S. sanctions, Tehran has backtracked on its obligations in the agreement to curtail its atomic activities such as uranium enrichment. Lebanon's Banking Association, ABL, announced that the banks would go on strike starting on Monday over what it said was a buildup of populist harmful stances taken against the banking sector. The statement said the group was taking action over the recent treatment of the sector, particularly the arrest of the head of Lebanon's credit bank this week. The statement said around 49 banks plan to strike. Meanwhile, the World Bank released another report on Lebanon's dire economic crisis. The DC-based institution said a significant portion of people's savings in the form of deposits at commercial banks have been misused and misspent over the past 30 years. Clashes between armed groups erupted overnight in Tripoli, according to local media reports, the latest violence to hit the Libyan capital. Gunfire and explosions were overheard around 1 a.m. on Saturday in the city. The fighting with light and heavy weapons occurred in the al Jibs district in the city's south. Tensions have been rising for months in Libya as two prime ministers are vying for power, raising fears of renewed conflict. The clashes on Saturday were between armed groups loyal to Prime Minister Abdel Hamid Beba, head of the unity government based in Tripoli, and others following his rival Fatih Bashaga, named in February as prime minister by a parliament based in Libya's east after he made a pact with Khalifa Haftar. Vertical farms in the United Arab Emirates are helping the country rely a bit less on food imports. Grown locally, indoors and without soil, produce stays fresh longer and doesn't rely on costly shipping. In the middle of Al-Quz industrial zone in Dubai city, an indoor vertical farm is erected across 5,600 square meters of land to produce fresh vegetables. Thanks to the LED lights, the vertical farm produces a wide variety of crops hydroponically meaning without soil. In the vertical farms, plants are growing in uncontaminated rock wool cultivation mats, so products are free from chemicals and pesticides. Also, 90% of the water irrigating the plants is recycled to be reused. With severe challenges from climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the disruptions in the global supply chain, food security is considered a key national priority for the UAE government, which is trying to increase the food production by 30 to 40 percent in the coming 10 years.